Welcome back and thank you for watching The World According to Rowan Dean. I do appreciate you being here every Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday evening at 9pm. Well, as you know, I've been calling for a royal commission into the abuse of power during COVID. And I've spoken regularly about the excessive overreach of many of our authorities, but particularly the Victorian police during lockdown, acting, of course, at the behest of Daniel Andrews. Perhaps the most salient example, but by no means the only one, was Ballarat mum Zoe Buller, who was accused of breaching health rules and organising a protest during the last lockdown in Victoria. The event had not even gone ahead, but in a scene more reminiscent of a dystopic sci-fi nightmare, scenes that went all the way around the world. You travel anywhere in the world, people saw this and they talked about it with horror, which was when Victoria police arrested a heavily pregnant woman in her pyjamas. Have a look. You're under arrest in relation to incitement. Incitement? Yeah. So, now, you're not obliged to say or do anything, but anything you say or do may be given in evidence. Excuse me, incitement for what? What, the, what on earth? Yeah. Excuse me, what, what on earth? Yeah, just put your phone down. Can you, Is like, record this? To... I'm in my pyjamas. What's I'm this? An ultrasound in an hour. Absolutely disgusting. There is good news, though. Because the charge of incitement against Zoe today was dropped. Zoe says she is now, quite rightly, considering, considering her options, quote, especially in regards to being handcuffed while pregnant. I hope she goes for them and I hope she really does them, makes them suffer. It seems like there are a few of these charges that are being dropped. But you might recall Zoe wasn't the only one. We had on Outsiders the very brave Monica Smith, who was tailed by police and similarly arrested for being involved in organising a demonstration, her democratic right. Uh, at the moment, we need to have a chat to you about um, a matter of incitement, so I need to place you under arrest for that, OK? Pardon? At the moment, you're under arrest for incitement. Have you guys been following me? You do not have to say I do anything, but anything you say to you may record and give them evidence. Do you understand that? Do you understand that, Monica? No comment. Okay. Please share this video as much as possible. Right. Monica Smith has just been arrested for just incitement. Car off for me, please. And the fine. We're sending that car off. Last month, the charges against Monica were dropped. Today, the charges against Zoe were dropped. Think of all the suffering, all the people who have suffered in the interim. Joining me now to discuss this is Monica Smith and David Limbrick, one of the few Victorian MPs who has consistently called out this madness. Monica, it's great to see you. Uh, how are you? I'll start, start with you. Um, tell us what it was like when they actually finally dropped the charges. Well, it was a mix of emotions, I've got to say. Obviously, it was a, a big relief to have the charges dropped. But I'm actually still on bail, which makes no sense because I have no criminal charges. So uh, that's quite uh, quite surprising, to be honest. But also, it's it's a bit of a shock as well because I actually wanted to go to trial, Rowan, because I wanted to air what they have done to me and people like Zoe. And I wanted them to be accountable and to have to actually, uh, you know, debate what they have done. Um, and by dropping the charges, we don't really get a chance to air that. Um, but obviously, like Zoe, I think we need to go back and get accountability because it's just not fair what they've done to people like me and Zoe. And Monica, you're incredibly brave, uh, but I spoke to you, you know, during the time when it was all happening and uh, you put up with the most uh, horrific things no person should have to go through. Uh, it was intolerable what they put you through. And yet here they can, according to Dan Andrews' system, uh, you just quietly drop the charges and hope it's all forgotten about. David uh, Limbrick, you're in the Victorian Parliament. Uh, I don't know how you cope with it, to be honest, looking across at the mob on the other side from you. Uh, but uh, what do you make of uh, the dropping of charges of both Zoe and Monica? Look, it's great that some of these charges are being dropped. I'm in contact with a number of other people who haven't had their incitement charges dropped, so it's certainly not universal. Look, my view here is that um, the right to peaceful assembly should never have been suppressed by the government in the first place. They should have uh, facilitated these protests. That we, They proved very early in the pandemic that they can do that at the Black Lives Matter march. Police very successfully uh, facilitated that protest. I attended that as well to watch the police response, and I thought it was 
was handled very well. And yet later on, we had this differing response from the police with other uh, government, uh, with other protests that were anti-government. I think we need some serious, uh, a serious look at protections of uh, individual rights in Victoria. And that's why I'm looking at... Uh, I want us to have a, a Bill of Rights in Victoria. I think it's absolutely essential that we protect our rights. But we also need to look back at what's happened during this pandemic, why these rights have been suppressed and what was the reasoning behind it. So I'm very supportive of a Royal Commission also looking into the police response and the government response into what happened during the pandemic. And I think, David, as well as a Royal Commission, there also needs to, there needs to be as many inquiries into this as possible. I think the Senate federally should be calling an inquiry to look out into it. I'd like to see Alex Antic and Gerard Rennick quizzing some of these characters at a federal level. But, Monica, back to you. Uh, I, would, I desperately would like to see you at a Royal Commission, uh, you know, there being able to tell your story and the individuals who tormented you to be across the uh, room from you. Uh, you went through some very dark days, Monica. You were in prison. Tell us what you would say in a Royal Commission about those darkest days. Well, I probably wouldn't make it about myself. I would make it about, obviously, the, the lockdown, anti-lockdown movement in general. The things that we were talking about have all, most of them, come true in many ways. We were talking about the fact that lockdowns would cause more harm than good. Yep. And look at today, we have over 2,500 cases, and they locked us down for five cases, Rowan. We were locked in our homes, and we were just fighting for human rights. We also were not happy with the vaccine mandate and that it was marketed as the only solution. And now we have more cases than we had with before vaccination. So actually, the things that we were bringing up, the anti-lockdown, uh, apparently conspiracy theorists were bringing up, actually, we had some really valid points. And instead of recognising the validity of our concerns and the amount of people that also were, were concerned, they just tried to silence us. And that was a political move back then to silence us. It didn't work. And now the, polit the political move is they're dropping the charges so that the Labor Party and Daniel Andrews and the now politicised police force don't get any more flack for the way that they've treated people. So it's really just a political game. And uh, people like me and Zoe, we're not going to give up because this is really serious. If, it, if it's happened once, it can happen again. And there will be other concerns in the future that have nothing to do with viruses that need to be protected. Our protest rights need to be protected. So I would really make it about the fact that we had valid points. We were representing a, a huge amount of people of Victoria and we were shut down instead of even heard at all. Uh, David, Monica makes some really very, very important points there. And that is, as, you know, I was saying here on Sky and others were saying and you were saying, uh, all throughout lockdowns there was the question, is this doing more harm than good? We now know from Britain, for example, that literally, statistically, it was doing more harm than good. Uh, Monica refers to vaccine mandates. I was strongly opposed to those right from the get-go, uh, probably before anyone else. Not Nothing to do with vaccine, but to do with the principle. And here we've learned again from the CDC in the States that actually, oh, sorry, we got that one wrong. There is no kind of difference between the vaccinated and the unvaccinated, which again, going back to Monica's point, those voices of dissent deserve to be heard in a democracy, and they were stifled. That is the great crime. Yours, David, was one of the very few in any of our parliaments who spoke up. So just, again, reiterate what, for you, are the key points that a Royal Commission needs to look at. I think we definitely need to look at the differing responses that we had. Um, I was very concerned about the inconsistent responses by the police. I think we would need to take a serious look in Victoria about the, the Charter of Human Rights and Responsibilities. We've got a Charter of Human Rights in Victoria which was meant to protect our rights, such as the right to peaceful assembly, and that has been worthless in reality. Um, it's been a total failure and we need better, better protections for the rights of Victorians. I'd also like to say, I, I think that, that the, the left has been uh, exposed here. They, they always have been going on for years about the right to peaceful assembly. And yet when people that they don't like want to protest, they apparently are fine with them uh, being suppressed by the government. This, this is not supporting people's rights. Supporting people's rights is supporting the rights of people that you may not necessarily agree with. I didn't agree with everything that all the protest were, protesters were saying throughout the pandemic. Um, you know, you, you have to support people's rights whether or not you agree with them, otherwise you don't support rights at all. 
100%. David Limbrick, Monica Smith, so great to talk to you both. You've both been great warriors, and it's so good to see so much coming around to validate what you were both saying. And Monica in particular, it's great to see you again. Uh, keep fighting because Australia needs people like you and David. Thanks so much.